Good afternoon, this is my first attempt of a, um, a blog or a uh, YouTube video. We're riding on a uh, 2012 DL650 Suzuki V-Strom. I've uh, done a few things to this bike. I've uh, put a fork brace on the front. I've lowered the, uh, the foot pegs. And I've got, of course, the uh, Mastrad adjustables. 22 inch screen from America. Uh, it's got quite a few different um, switches on it than normal. Of course the heated grips come in handy in the winter. And uh, different points that you can run um, cameras and so things off it. The cigar, a lot of input there. And also we've got a um, 5 amp USB. Um, that's just the garage door opener sitting right there. This is the mount for the radar detector, occasionally uh, want to do a bit of a quick trip. And of course my uh, camera controller here. And what we've got over here, we've got the um, extra set of fog lights at the front and also some little LEDs just under the main headlight. I've put it from the States, a acropoic uh, pipe and a power command module just to get it to um, react a bit better to the, uh, to the pipe. I bought it with 3,000 k's on the clock and now it's done uh, 16,502 kilometres. Uh, I've kept it up to date with servicing. Uh, put the old um, air horn, uh, the Stubel mounted air horn on it. And also I put some sliders on there on the side. I found uh, the crash bars from a previous bike, a 650 Versys, that the crash bars caused the vibration through the through the um, body of the bike, so I've taken off the. Um, so I went away from crash bars and got these sliders fitted, so just to help with the odd uh, fall down in the garage or something like that. I've got the mirror extenders on it as well, they uh, assist being able to see a bit more clearly over your shoulders. And that little light thing there is part of the radar detector, of course, to let me know if this. Uh, there's trouble ahead. Um, other than that, um, I've done a few trips of it. I've got the uh, the GV um, pannier kit for it, and also the V47 GV box on the back. But I did set up the lights to come on, so when the brakes come on, the uh, brake lights come on on the um, on the box, the rear box as well. Um, so we're travelling in Hawke's Bay at the moment of New Zealand. Um, it's a nice evening, it's actually about 6.30 at night and it's in November so we're getting some good weather. I've been looking at a few alternatives to this, I've been looking at a DL1000 and also a Triumph 800 road version. Um, I've got to say though that um, I keep going back to the 650 and it's it's pretty hard to pick. Movability, it's very nimble, it's nice and light, it's easy to throw into a corner. Uh, it's a pretty comfortable ride. It's got enough power for me, I'm, I'm a single rider. And um, yeah, I just find it's, um, it's a great bike. So Hawke's Bay is pretty famous for its wines. And um, yeah, we... Uh, Get rid of this car here. It's got a lovely sound that pipe, you know, it really um brings a nice clean crisp sound. And uh as I say loud pipe saves lives, but um I haven't taken the baffle out of the pipe, I didn't see it necessary, feel that it was necessary to do that. Um, the sound of it as standard is still a nice, nice sound to it. Of course it's lighter than the original pipe, so it uh, possibly helps a little bit with the handling. Put the handguards on it of course, uh, that complements the um, heated grips for the winter. 
Um, it's a bike that, although it's a adventure bike style riding, it's not full fairing, it still gives you a fair bit of good protection on the bike. It's a great, um, very commanding uh, position. You can see the road clearly, you can see what's sort of going on. You can um, still, uh, at an arm's distance, the handlebars are sort of perfect, really. And um, yeah, that gives it a, a nice, nice relaxed position, I guess. You do many, many miles on this and find that I'm not uh, getting too sore or sore shoulders and or even sore hands like some of the sports bikes. You tend to put a lot of weight into the front, so you get it quite sore in the palm of your hand. I mean, this isn't really uh, an issue. The roads here can throw up shingle at any time, really, so. Uh, we take a little bit slowly around these corners due to the fact that we are sort of a little bit of a rural outback here and the roads aren't necessarily swept so we can get a bit of, um, sort of gravel and skiddy bits I'll just pull over somewhere and um, show you the bike um, to see you can get an idea of what few extras I've got on. In fact, this looks a pretty good spot right here if I can just duck across here. Yeah, this is pretty good right here. The larger platform for the um, bike stand there, I put a centre stand on it and the sliders here and here. Um, this little uh, toolbox I got from the States, that's a good idea, carrying bits and pieces extra, and there's my monarchy frames ready for the panniers to go on the side if I go into a bit of a tour with it. Um, the Stabell uh, air horn, of course, is sitting just nicely in there, the, the bracket I got from the States to fit that on. Um, so at the front here you've got the uh, Ventura headlight covers, and of course the extra fog lights with the nice little brackets. They came out from Australia, those brackets. So the adjustable um, windscreen's good. And this little um, uh, fitting at the front here with the 25mm knob on it, ready again to accommodate a GPS. You can plug it straight into there, or can chuck my phone on to there. I've got some phone brackets to go on to here as well if I need to as well. Um, the tyres I put on were Pilot 4 tyres, the trail version. These little brake lights are pretty pretty bright. I don't know if you've got to see the daylight or not, but um, um, yeah, they sort of sit there and they they brought. And then when the brake lights come on, of course, these really light up, like super bright, and these light up as well. I guess due to the fact that. Um, there are some accidents out there, of course, that uh, that um, can be caused by people coming up and hitting you from behind. So that's it with its lights all sort of going. I'm sort of into visibility, so these idiots can see us um, coming. Skirt on, although it's only plastic. I'm not going off-road on this bike, so it just looks the part. The, the fins here sort of match up with inside here, so that's the idea of that. Um, other than that, this, yeah, I must have put a few extra bits and pieces on here, but uh, overall it's uh, pretty much the 2012 DL650. I did have some risers, some handlebar risers on. I tried the 2-inch ones, and I also tried the 1-inch ones, but at both times I felt that they were, um, they were letting the front be a little bit light and a little bit flighty, so I decided uh, not to... Um, not to uh, carry on with them so I've actually taken them right off and gone back to standard and felt with the extra weight on the front wheel now it doesn't seem to move around so much in the uh, in the in the wind I guess having the larger screen is the disadvantage of um, sometimes the side wind you can get the screen at the moment it's set up fairly low I think sort of medium can come up a little bit higher as well if you need it. It does a pretty good job as protection 
not going to say there are any disadvantages to large screeners, of course that's side wind that can come along and it can start to knock you around a bit. I have ridden the DL1000, I've got to say the DL1000 feels a little bit more planted on the road. Um, the 650, I guess the, any part, the weakest part of this bike would probably be the suspension. Um, I weigh 105 kg, so I'm not a little skinny guy, but um, playing around with the preload. If you tighten up the preload to full, I find um, a lot of people say that they suggest to do that. It's a little bit harsh. I'm going to sit around here because I just realised this is a no exit road. I haven't had to do anything to this bike except the uh, the normal services. So uh, as I say it's been ultra reliable. Um, brakes average, they're okay. Um, the rear brake is probably not as strong as it should be. Um, but you know, there's no perfect bike out there. It's just you tend to be about 90% happy with your bike and the 10% that you find you don't like is just what you have to live up, live, live, live with. So down the forks here, I don't know if you can see there or not, I'll have a try to have a little gun. It is a, um, it's a fork stabiliser bar and the idea of that is, is to help again with the crosswind issue and um, I found it, I didn't, it didn't make a remarkable difference, but I think there was some difference there, and um, it, uh, it was just another bit of an accessory or a farkle that I decided to put on. Um, probably one of my favourite things I did was actually lower the uh, foot pegs, because you have to adjust your brake pedal and your gear, sure. and it just brings your legs down a little bit lower, so... I'm five foot ten. Again, not a particular tall guy, but um, uh, it just helps with um, long trips, keeping you again in that relaxed position. You know, this doesn't have the traction control or the uh, the, re the uh, on the fly remapping that some bikes have. But you know, I've never really bothered with that. I just. Um, and nothing's really swayed me to buy another bike because it hasn't got that. I sort of challenge myself a bit when I slow right down, not to put my feet down. So I just do a little bit of back brake, of course, and uh, be fairly upright on this bike. And probably the look at the um, the um, balance of the weight or the you're sort of fighting the gravity a little bit. On the left here is the Suzuki dealership. Uh, connected to um, the Ford and the Mazda guys with the cars. And this street is called Harry Tonga Street. And Harry Tonga Street is the, I guess, the main, main street of, of Hastings. I'm going to sign off now, I've just done my first ever YouTube video, hope you've liked it, um, just a little bit of a discussion about a DL650.